the other colleagues who have joined us. Um, so we also just want to apologize. We are starting slightly uh, behind schedule, uh, but we hope to finish also uh, on schedule. Um, we are, of course, brought here by the very serious business of the National Students uh, Financial Aid Scheme, NESFAS, as it relates to, in particular, the decision that the minister has taken to dissolve the NESFAS board and to appoint an administrator. And we did indicate that the purpose of this media briefing would be for the minister um, to come and explain to the nation what the reasons for that decision was and what further implications that decision has for the sector and uh, for the country. And uh, before we even go into that, uh, if you could also just join me in taking this opportunity, you know, by the powers vested in me by the Director General of the Department of Higher Education uh, and Training uh, to wish the Minister a happy birthday today, right? And uh, on behalf of both your departments, you know, as communicated by the Director General, the Department of Higher Education and Science and Innovation, we wish you uh, good health and more youth, right, Minister. So thank you very much, uh, you know, for the blessings that have been this thing conferred on you. And may you see many more, you know. And as a way of confirming, I would ask this assembly to just by way of a round of applause, you know, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. to say that you were pro present when that announcement was made, you know. <laughs> Without much ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the media, minister and colleagues, I now wish to invite the minister to come and address the media briefing. There's no space today here. Yeah. And uh, if they can help us move them. Or I can take this out. Because oh, someone I won't name won't be impressed if I go back to my papers, which I find very easy. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. This is much better. Except I've got to look down now. Uh, uh, program uh, Director Mr. Verim Bailey, my media liaison officer, and thank you for your kind wishes uh, on my birthday. What a way to celebrate a birthday. Uh, let me also greet the Director General uh, of the Department of Higher Education and Training, Dr. Nkosnati Sishi, uh, my special advisor, Mr. Ngabang Mandela, uh, Mr. Stebis of Freeman Numvalu, who I will introduce just now, uh, members of the media, fellow South Africans. I call the special briefing of the media to publicly communicate the reasons for my decision to dissolve the NESFAS board with immediate effect and to place the institution under administration. This I did on Friday with the publication of the Government Gazette. I also wish to use this media briefing to outline the implications of this decision and further outline the measures we will be putting in place to ensure the continued functioning of the National Student Financial Aid Scheme and even improve it. Our decision to communicate in this manner is informed by a number of considerations. As a minister, I have a deep appreciation for the, or oh, not as a minister, as minister in this instance. I have a deep appreciation for the progressive and transformative role that NESFAS has played over the 33 years of its existence. As one of the democratic government's most decisive instruments 
in the fight against intergenerational poverty and to advance access to post-school education and training. In its history, NESFAS has supported more than 5 million beneficiaries, thus producing hundreds of thousands of skilled professionals and the middle class, especially from within the ranks of the poor and the working class sections of society. This is definitely one of the most important achievements of this government over the past 30 years of our democracy and it must be celebrated as such. In fact, there can be no better way of celebrating 30 years of our democracy than to highlight and celebrate the 30 years of NESFAS, the, the, the 33 years of NESFAS. Flowing from this, I'm also sensitive to the public expectation on NESFAS as it relates to its role in enabling poor and working class families to give their sons and daughters the gift of education. Legally, the National Student Financial Aid Scheme Act number 56 of 1999 empowers me as minister to, amongst others, assign whatever legitimate functions to the National Student Financial Aid Scheme and to appoint the board of NESFAS. Through various formal engagements, as Minister, I have consistently raised my concerns and unhappiness with the outgone NESFAS board about it, the inability or failure of NESFAS to carry out and implement some of its basic responsibilities that I have allocated to it in terms of the Act. The inability relates to the following. Inability to fully implement the recommendations of the Veltsman's report, key among which was the termination of the contracts of the direct payment service providers, which according to this report, the Veltsman's report, were appointed irregularly. I must say I raised this in December that steps must be taken to remove these service providers. And that hasn't happened. Also, the consistent inability to oversee payment of student allowances timelessly by management, which has resulted in unnecessary stress for students and their parents, and also continues to strengthen the very stability of some of our TVET colleges and universities. The inability to submit a corrected annual report to Parliament and inability to manage and finalize the close-out report of NESFAS arising from the old scheme that was there before the new one. The inability to address very serious and glaring capacity deficiencies within the organization, including the call center, by the way, which is still not functional. The inconsistent the consistent inability to respond to student queries in a timeless and efficient manner, and inability to consult on the guidelines for the missing middle and the implementation of the missing middle solution. In an attempt to resolve these problems or to mitigate their negative impacts, as Minister, I engaged the board on several occasions on various solutions, including a turnaround strategy, which has not been achieved within agreed timelines. It may be unfair to put every board member into the same port, because they were really board members who were working very hard. But there were those that seemed to be wanting to go in a different direction than where we should actually be going thus leading, to a large extent, recently, to a divided board. So despite these engagements, several engagements, SNESFAS continues to face serious challenges in its business processes, IT systems, 
capacity and policies and controls. Unfortunately, this has not just impacted on the well-being of students negatively, but has also brought serious reputational damage to NESFAS itself, the Department of Higher Education and Training and Government. And our detractors have been celebrating these weaknesses. And I have said this before. Our enemies and detractors want to attack NESFAS because NESFAS is one of the most important interventions of this democratic government, as I said at the beginning. And unfortunately, these weaknesses have given them a weapon by which to actually attack government. And it's very clear that we must distinguish between these weaknesses in NESFAS and the impact that NESFAS has made over its 33 years of existence. In view of all of this, and in terms of Section 1A and 1B of the NESFAS Act, on Thursday the 11th of April, I convened a meeting with the NESFAS board and informed them of my decision to dissolve the board. It's an unfortunate decision because it's not nice to dissolve boards. I don't enjoy it. And of course, I also then announced there that I will be placing an NESFAS under administration with immediate effect. In the same meeting, I also thank the outgoing board members for their service to the organization. Then on Friday, the 12th of April, 2024, I announced the appointment of Mr. Stembius of Freeman Numvalo as the new administrator for NESFAS. So as from Friday, there is now an administrator, and here is a uh, Mr. Nomvalo uh, Freeman. Nangla Pamwa Ningang Buzibu, two pillow administrator. Uh, we appeal and no mag appeal. Nang we appeal. I want to say, Mr. Nomvalo, thank you very much for being with us today. And as some of you may be aware, Mr. Nomvalo has over 25 years' working experience. 17 of which were at senior level, both in the public and private sector. Mr. Nomvalo also holds the distinction of being the first African and longest serving accountant general of a democratic South Africa. He also possesses extensive knowledge and an impeccable track record in public finance and government processes. His last job has been a CEO of the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, SICA. As the new administrator of NESFAS, Mr. Nomvalo's mandate will include the following. We are saying will include because there may be other issues that we may want to engage, or as we engage further, we may decide that they actually need to be done. But here are the, the issues so far. To take over the governance, management, and administration of NESFAS for an initial period of 12 months, but subject to renewal for another a further 12 months, depending on progress. And that is from the 12th of April. That is two days ago. That Mr. Nomvalo is now the administrator. It's not that he is still going to be. He is now the administrator of NESFAS. Also, his task is to ensure the effectiveness in terms of the finalization of funding guidelines of the loan scheme for the missing middle, to resolve the data integration challenges as a matter of agency. You know, there is thing need for NESFAS to, for institutions to send data to NESFAS. By the way, I would like to urge that uh, our colleagues that we work with, some in USAF, that it's important that we work together and not throw stones at each other. Because in some instances, the fault is not with NESFAS. The fault is with some of the institutions who continue not to send data on time so that NESFAS is supposed to pay. And then NESFAS carries that entire responsibility when, in some instances, it's not NESFAS responsibility. 
So therefore, we urge USAF to ensure that all its institutions, they give us data on time. So Mr. Numvaro is going to help us to achieve this. We will also, by the way, just this week, facilitating a meeting between Mr. Nomvalo and all our stakeholders, students, vice chancellors, college principals, the unions, and others. Also, we would expect the new administrator to finalize all the necessary funding decisions and outstanding payments, including those relating to student accommodation. Now, this point is very important because some people were saying, oh, now that NESFAS is under administration minister, it means my appeal is no longer going to be considered, a student would ask. Or as a private student accommodation provider, I'm still being owed. Does it mean now I'm not going to be paid? No. NESFAS will do all what it's supposed to do. And that's why the administrator is here. We want to assure everybody. We want to assure the country. We are doing this because we want to improve the functionality of the organization. Also, we will expect the administrator to ensure the reconciliation of funding data between universities and TV colleges and NESFAS, to ensure that all the necessary agreements are in place and that students are accurately funded and recorded, and making sure that all NESFAS qualifying students receive funding. Also, we expect the administrator to oversee the opening of the 2025 online applications process, both bursaries and loans, which are a few months away, by the way, to ensure also that all the necessary partnerships for managing the applications process are in place and can be effectively monitored and develop and manage a communications plan for the application period. Also for the administrator to develop in consultation with the department, universities, and TVET colleges an effective realistic plan for the 2025 funding cycle and ensure that all parties understand all their roles and responsibilities. And any necessary implementation support is also made available as needed. Also to ensure that NESFAS pays adequate attention to both TVET colleges and universities in all aspects of its core business processes. To put in place the necessary management and governance controls to ensure that all risks of the 2025 student funding cycles <coughs> cycle are appropriately managed with the support of the department and institutions and as necessary. I mustn't be misunderstood when I constantly refer to 2025. I have already pointed out that things that need to be done now in 2024 for 2024 must be done. But also it's important that we begin to look at the next academic year right now. Because NESFAS normally opens around, before it has even opened in September actually. So it's very important that we have these things in place. Also, we expect the administrator to manage the day-to-day -day work of NESFAS and steer the organization to address its operational challenges fully. This will include the strengthening of structures, systems, and policies that will ensure good governance and effective management of the core operational mandate of NESFAS. Also, to ensure that adequate plans are in place to make funding decisions at the earliest possible time of the year and as close to the period of registration as possible. Also, we expect the administrator to oversee all necessary forensic, this is important, and other investigations necessary for the effective operation and management of the entity. One of those was the, was the investigation done by the board on the allegations ari arising out of outer document. I understand that report is close to completion, which means the administrator will have to take it and look at it and act accordingly where necessary, as, as well as many other investigations that may have to happen. Now, I don't want DG to start speculating or saying things prematurely. There's lots of allegations about 
allocation of student accommodation, for instance. Those matters may have to be looked into. Just you do, uh, uh, what do you call it, a random sample, mm. you know, to look into how these things, some of these things have been allocated. As administrator, Mr. Numval will report to the Minister of Higher Education and Training or to his delegated officials. Besides other forms of communication and interaction with the Ministry and the Department, we'll expect the Administrator to submit a written report every three months on the progress made regarding the above issues. As Administrator, Mr. Nomvalo may appoint technical experts where necessary and where he deems fit to assist in the different areas of cooperation at NESFAS, of course, consulting with myself. Furthermore, together with myself, uh, I will, the administrator, myself, I will lead a process to further communicate this decision of his appointment to the employees of NESFAS and uh, to other stakeholders. The dissolution of the board, let me repeat this, will not affect the normal functioning of NESFAS. As Mr. Mnisi was saying the other day on radio, the spokesperson of NESFAS, including all payments that have got to, got to be made. So people must not panic. We, we, are, we seek to address these things. We're not going to change our commitments just because there is now administration. Unless if we pick up problematic things. Where we pick up problems, then we will act. The administrator, I wish to say, will convene a meeting towards the end of the week, hopefully, but at the latest by early next week, just in case there are some delays, to communicate, give more details on all these things that will have to be followed up and be done. I can't do that here in the detail that it is, it is needed. Now, in conclusion, as Minister, I wish to take this opportunity to once again thank the board members of the board that has been dissolved for their service and wish each one of them well in their future endeavors and also to thank Mr. Numbada for agreeing to take over this task. We are lucky actually to be getting someone like him right as he finishes at Saika before others think of grabbing him or himself thinking of going there and there. We managed just to move in just on time and say, hey, would you consider coming to to help us. Huh? The country needs it. Yes, the country needs it. Me as the acted as a counter general for treasury for the whole country. So he knows what it means to be needed by a country. Now the decision to dissolve the NESFA sport was not something that we took lightly. And I wish to assure the public that in taking these decisions I have considered all possible implications, including the impact that it might have on NESFAS employees and the students. That's why I'm saying that we are putting in place mechanisms to ensure that that doesn't happen. As stated in my media statement on Thursday, 11th of April this year, this decision forms part of a set of ongoing interventions by myself as minister, which are primarily aimed at improving the organizational efficiency of NESFAS. Most importantly, my decision also aims to ensure that deserving students receive the necessary financial support and that NESFAS remains focused on its mandate, which is to provide financial assistance to students from poor and working class backgrounds. If we have released this, uh, uh, some people will have to correct it because it says here, uh, students from poor and working backgrounds. You know. So it's not backgrounds that are working, it's the working class. That is. <laughs> I know, we're, we're all rushing, you know, typing this. I'm not blaming you. You write well as a matter of fact. I note with appreciation the statements also by the student, political, labor, and civil society organizations and ordinary citizens that have welcomed this decision and wish to assure them that as a department, we remain committed to working with all the key st stakeholders in the post-school education and training sector. Even our detractors, if they change their minds, 
they want to work to us with us, our door is open. But if they choose to remain as detractors, let them remain as detractors as long as they want. If they change, we are willing to work with anyone who wants to work with us because we are an open government. NESFAS is essentially about the cherished dreams of millions of families who wish to give their daughters and sons the gift of education but may not have the financial means. As a society and government, we have historical and moral obligation to ensure that the dreams of these families and their dependents are realized. For this reason, it can't be business as usual at NESFAS or within my department for that matter. When students are unable to register, buy themselves food, or are threatened with eviction by private accommodation providers because their allowances have not been paid. I also use this opportunity to call upon all workers and staff at NESFAS to redouble their efforts in ensuring that this entity realizes its objectives. I do wish to say this, by the way, without sounding vociferous. I had to help a student at Nesfas who was being turned back. I, didn't, I need to say this. Who, who was being turned back because they said the university has not sent the results. It's a continuing student. Uh, the university insists that no, we sent the results. So she, hap she happens to approach someone I know. Then I get to NES first, and then she says, uh, I've got uh, people here who are giving me that answer. So the person who told me says, can I please speak to those people? They refused. COO. They refused. They said no. And then this person asked, can I then speak to the supervisor of that person at NESFAS? The supervisor refuses. Because they don't want to help this child. And then we are working for NESFAS. We are working for NESFAS. The child was crying, not knowing what to do. The matter was brought to my attention. I said, sit at the reception right now. We phoned and phoned and phoned and happened to find senior people. She was helped. You know, when she was leaving, they say, here goes the queen of Nesfas, the princess. Even the minister comes out because you are the princess, ridiculing her. Those people, frankly, they don't belong to be working at Nesfas. If I had my way, they would go. They would definitely go. You can't treat the children of the working class that way as an employee of NESFAS. I'm not saying that's what all employees of NESFAS are doing. But those two employees, I, 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 I will come in as a witness, as a minister, to actually say that is what they did. We don't expect that. That's why we will engage the trade union movement as well and say, within your ranks, you can't be having people who are actually behaving this way. This kid had to cry even more because she's being ridiculed. Or because all what she wants. In the end, by the way, the university had submitted. But Nesfas couldn't pick it up. What was the explanation? No, it was sent when we're using our old system. Now we have a new system. Let the university send them again through the new system. Which shows your task as administrator in terms of your IT systems that actually needs to be solved. I'm sorry to be feeling like this, but I have to, because I know what it is like 
to be rejected in an institution. And the student is doing third year. What are we trying to do? So I hope that then we will have a good discussion with the workers. Hopefully these ones who did that to be exposed. I had a very good meeting with the shop stewards, by the way, of Nehau at Nesfas. Very good meeting. And we reached a very important understanding. I wish also that we draw them in into this so that they actually become aware that such things are not needed. Surely, it would be very cruel for me to allow such instances to continue. Therefore, it is my sincere hope that all will support me and my department as we continue with the work of ensuring that NESFAS simply does what it's meant to do, which is to provide deserving students with financial support and do so on time. Those who are deciding, by the way, those political parties who are deciding to campaign opportunistically around these challenges that we face at NESFAS, I say to them, shame on you that you could actually opportunistically campaign because it's as good as this. It's as good as gambling with the future of our young people. I thank you very much. So thank you so much, uh, Minister. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, you've got the, uh, the, the this thing, the briefing and the statement from the Minister, colleagues on the media. And uh, we are now going to give you an opportunity to ask your questions. Uh, you could say other things as well. You don't necessarily always have to ask questions. There may be other important things you can also share with us, you know, as the media. But, uh, Maybe for the media to thank us once, you know, to say you are doing a great job. Let, let's, let's keep on hoping. Let's keep on hoping. Uh, hopefully it will happen during your tenure, you know. <laughs> okay, we, we let's keep on hoping. But this is your opportunity, colleagues in the media, to ask your questions. And as per usual, please just remember to identify the media house you represent, and then uh, you can ask your questions. Uh, we can now take, by show of hands... Uh, can we just see, and then we'll take a couple of rounds. Um, okay, I see you there. My sister, I see you there. Is there. I'm aware that the colleagues from GCIS will guide us if we get uh, any online um, questions, right? Okay, for now, let's take those two. Uh, as you identify yourself, you can go first, uh, my sister. Well, thank you very much. that it's almost as if every time they need to deal with NASPAS and they deal with the university as well, it's, it's, a, it's a, there's this stuck communication when the university sends them back to NASPAS, then NASPAS sends them back to the university. What are some of the plans in dealing with this communication struggle that students have? You know, alleging that they have to find someone there in the Western Cape to help them if the student is at you know, UJ or this university, what kind of plans, solid plans, uh, will help students better communicate with NASPAS? And also, in terms of um, the allowances that haven't been paid, when will those be paid for students who are still waiting for their payments, as well as um, the overall, in terms of students getting funding? You know, so much of the academic year starts around February, and students complain that they, NASPAS only ends up paying sometimes in May, as late as May. How are we dealing with payments such as those? Okay, thanks for those questions. Uh, you may follow, Ceci. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Gino Bairani from PNCA. So, um, my first question is precisely to the same as that we want to share the exact date when the outstanding payments will be done. Because the expensive damages, uh, there is an expensive damage already on the ground. The students are saying that they want many payments. That's what is being going for. We know that the students are saying, uh, marching 
protesting and handing over the memorandum to want to understand from the minister <coughs> the action uh, of dissolving the board. Is it a little too late at this point? And then um, the other uh, issue is when the companies that have been appointed to um, participate funds to the students. Uh, those companies, um, these over bodies, I may not have had to see. I would just want to let the minister as to as, as the students are calling for the immediate um, you know, removal of those uh, companies. What you think on that? What are you saying? You also spoke about um, the effectiveness of the employees. Students are also calling that the dissolution of the board is not enough. You should also be sent down to the management, particularly the students. All right. Um, th that is enough for the first round, you know. Uh, can we can we get responses to that round of questions, and then we will take another round of uh, questions if we have. Uh, I will hand over to the minister and the team to direct on how the questions are going to be handled. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you. By the way, I forgot to say that in the light of the example I was giving of trying to humiliate uh, that woman student calling her a queen or a princess, I want to say to all Nesfa students, <coughs> you must rightly expect to be treated as queens and princesses and princes because those people who are sitting on that deserve to be responding to you. So you shouldn't be ashamed. I told the student, don't be ashamed. You need to be treated, treated as a princess. Uh, even in most of the government expect nothing less than that. <clears throat> you know one of the tasks that I've just outlined now uh, for NESFAS, which we expect the administrator to really prioritize, is the issue of a proper system for quick exchange at the press of a button, if you like, of information between universities and colleges on the one hand and NESFAS on the other hand. That's important. I insist as, as Minister that that will have to be addressed by NESFAS. By the way, I'm not running away from my responsibility. But we must also all remember that NESFAS has got its own board and it's got its own management. I don't run NESFAS by remote from 123 Francis Bard, the headquarters of DHET. So my task is to make sure that we support NESFAS to be stronger, which is what I'm doing with these interventions. But let's not forget that NESFAS has got its own, it's an entity. When is NESFAS paying? Maybe we can leave that to NESFAS for now. Uh, they will give us some idea when are we paying exactly. You can't be pointing at the administrator. I wouldn't start it on Friday, Ishmael. No, no, I will, I will call you just now. Let, let, yeah, you can come forward. Uh, let me just finish these questions, then you will come in after I finish uh, answering. Uh, because I, I've been briefed, but it's better since Nesfas is here to be able to speak directly. Uh, when they don't. Huh? <coughs> no, not Katle, also the other question. Buffet, you buffet, you can come back when you video a reporter. Northwest. <laughs> She's one of our favorite reporters when it comes to looking at that video. Yeah. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about, Mafedi. Uh, that Nesfas is actually going to, to answer that. As to what actions need to be taken against anyone at NESFAS. That I am leaving to the good offices of the administrator. We are not going there because I'm not appointing the administrator because we are saying to the administrator, go and fire everyone there. Definitely not.
There is management which is employed. There are vacant posts that are there. There are gaps. There are people who are there. Some are performing well. There may be those who are not performing that well. The attitude of the administrator is to go and address those rather than to go there with a big stick. Uh, punitive. But work, yes, definitely must be, must be done. Uh, that's all on my side. COO. Uh, I'll open door. I thought it was to come the administrator. No, thank you very much, Minister. It was a pendul. So I think from our side, uh, what we can say is that uh, NSFAS granted an extension to all universities uh, to continue to disperse uh, allowances to students from April to July 2024. So in other words, this extension is for four months. So on the 12th of April, 2024, the scheme advanced a payment to universities to disperse student allowances on the 15th of April, 2024. This includes the catch-up allowances uh, to all universities who submitted their registration data after 19 month, March, uh, 2024 uh, cut-off date. These institutions were requested to prioritize these catch-up payments and further provide NSFAS with the timelines for the disbursements of these allowances. The extension granted to universities to disperse allowances underscores the scheme's commitment to students to receive uninterrupted uh, monthly allowances with precision and without delays. So what we have done, we have advanced, made that advance upfront payment uh, on Friday, and then as we've indicated that the date will be the 15th of April, and this is for universities. And maybe just to highlight the point, Minister, that this will be for all type of allowances. So with regards to book allowances, that will be done by institutions. It will be paid by institutions. Academ accommodation allowances for the non-pilot uh, accommodations will be done by institutions. And then private accommodation allowances uh, pilot will be done by accommodation solution partners. Food allowances will be institutions. Uh, travel allowances will also be institutions. Uh, living allowances and the pre-funder allowances will also be done by institutions. And this will also include the disability uh, funding. So all of those will be uh, institutions. Now with regards to uh, TVET College payments update, the, uh, the, the, the catch-up payments will be disbursed on Monday, and this is tomorrow, 15th April, through direct payment partners. So the purpose of this catch-up disbursement is to ensure that all outstanding student allowances and tuition are settled for students whose valid registration data, and this is important, was uploaded onto the NSFAS portal by the 11th of April 2024. The extension granted uh, to universities to disperse allowances underscores uh, this scheme's uh, commitment for students to receive uninterrupted monthly allowances again, and that's the point that we're making. So the payment will cover the May 2024 allowances, uh, trimester one. Students will receive full payments uh, while semester one, and annual students will get a four months worth of uh, allowance. So I hope I've been able to answer that question. Yeah. Thank you very much. But you need to point out uh, some piece which is staying as far as it's Yes. When <coughs> India will have uh, its field day as it normally okay. does. All right. Get all the answers in detail. All right. To, to just add uh, one point that the CO was supposed to add as well. But um, So the other thing, in addition to what was just shared with you colleagues, is that there's an understanding that uh, NESFAS is going to have a separate and standalone press briefing to give further detail and more clarity with regards to the outstanding payment as to how those are going to be addressed. So you should now expect uh, an announcement from NESFAS on when that will be done. So we will leave that detail and that announcement to them.
because that has been a specific press briefing that's going to deal with the issue of allowances specifically in greater detail. So we should, we should expect that. Um, can, we, can, we, can we check if there are still any other questions? Okay. I see Oskatli's hand is up. Noted, Oskatli. Let's go to the back and then we'll come to you, Oskatli. That's probably from GCIS. I think that's very, I will be presenting questions that are coming from, uh, from online. Okay. And the first uh, two are coming from Hajra Omadi, representing Business Day. And uh, the first question is that uh, you asked uh, the universities uh, to pay fund students until July as reported. And if so, are you not shifting uh, the goalpost until after elections? And uh, the second question, will there be accountability for why the four service providers were appointed now that uh, some have resigned and now that the board has been dissolved. And uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, four questions from Okute, who is representing uh, Cape Town, uh, the you that we know how we can go about uh, these questions. Um, the first one, uh, uh, the independent legal firm TGR, Artemis was appointed to prove Mr. Koza. If they started work, and um, what is the time frame uh, for them to complete the report? And uh, the second one, will uh, the firm possibly look into uh, the conduct of other board members for consequence management, as the minister suggested some board members were not doing their work? And number three, since the NSPAS board has been uh, dissolved, will the TGR actions findings be handed to the administrator or the minister? And uh, the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education is calling on the minister to consider conducting a skills audit uh, of the workforce and, and that performance management be implemented without fear or favor. Will this be uh, uh, considered? And Christian Duplessis from Network 24. Uh, what is the response by the minister uh, to the call by parties and organizations for him to resign? in light of the situation at NSFAS and the allegations of corruption against uh, okay. uh, the minister. That should be all for now. All right. I think you very what much. was the second question by Hajra? Uh, the second question, uh, Minister, uh, by Hajra was, will there be accountability for why the four service providers were appointed? now that uh, some have resigned and now that the board has been dissolved. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, TK, for those. Um, minister and team, if we could be guided on the responses to those. The minister, uh, in, in, in a soccer team, you would be referred to as a strike. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You don't know whether I was playing actually last night in the game between Pirates and Amazon. So you may be surprised, you know. <laughs> uh, no, thank you very much. Let me answer these questions. If there is anywhere where I am short, DG, you may want to come in, your COO also, because some of the questions we had, we had covered. Maybe Hashira has not understood what do we mean that the universities will continue paying? Uh, so that perhaps the, the characterization of shifting the goalposts and also just kicking the can down the road until after the elections is, is properly a, a accounted for or we respond to that. Nesfas, we changed. Let me get an opportunity also to explain this. Some years ago, I don't exactly remember now when was this, 2013, 2014, we were inundated with lots of allegations of corruption in the allocation of NESFAS first, and also in the distribution of NESFAS allowances. The first one is the allocation, who receives NESFAS. And we undertook a very extensive forensic study, which indeed showed that in a number of universities, 
there is lots of corruption in the allocation of Nesfas. We even had anecdotal stories which were real. A student who is being paid for by his or her parents manages to go to the finance office and buy Nesfas. 2,000 rand and you get your, all your tuition and whatever paid for. Some of these anecdotes was that some of the students had flat screen television. Those days, flat screen television was still a big thing. I'm not so sure today. And cars, some of them driving cars. We have got that report, by the way, DG. I think that it, because this thing keeps on coming back, we may have to release this report again. If we hadn't released it, let's release it publicly. It was at that point, well, there was another problem, by the way, that Nesfas gets given money by the department. And as an entity, it has to account for that money. But if you then take that money as Nesfas gives it to a university, and the university messes it up, <laughs> the problem comes back to hit you as Nesfas. To say, how do you account? Where is a proper account of the money that you had used? It was at that point that we decided that let's build what we call a student-centered model. Student-centered model simply meant this. Let NESFAS take direct responsibility for approving who qualifies. And NASFAS has been doing this relatively well. Of course, there are snacks, uh, that some students are saying, hey, the whole year, my status says pending. Pending. That's one of the things that have been frustrating. But many students get their money. SASA students get told instantly, because you were a SASA beneficiary, you qualify to get NASFAS. Centrally done by NASFAS. We don't intend changing from that, even including al allowances, because of the evidence that we have. I know there is pressure now. Minister, just allow the universities to continue forever. For now, we are then saying, given the fact that we are sitting with an anomalous situation, terribly anomalous, the Verksman's report says, these four service providers who are paying allowances now specifically were appointed irregularly. So what we've got to do is to go to court. By the way, I, I didn't fully understand this thing, that in order to uh, terminate a tender, no matter how obvious it is that it was flawed, you have to go to court. Well, that's a democratic dispensation. Some in the media become very impatient and say, ah, minister, why are you still having this? And we have to remind sometimes sections of the media that we are not a banana republic. We have a rule of law. So NASFAS was supposed to have gone to court to nullify this. We agreed in December. Somewhere in Johannesburg, when I met the board of NASFAS. The courts are closed, but courts are never totally closed for urgent applications. <coughs> to do an urgent application. Till now, it hasn't happened. Now, what do we do then? Because we are faced with people who have been fingered that they didn't get these the, the, this tender correctly and the law. So we decided with the universities, let the universities pay. In other words, we take the money and give it to universities. By the way, even some of these people who are saying, let the universities pay, Minister. Most of the universities, it's not them who are paying. They go and get their own private service providers to actually pay. Some of these service providers, by the way, who were not paying before, are amongst those who are working with Outer to try and discredit myself as a minister. The old apartheid white tenderpreneurs who were benefiting towards the end of apartheid and at the early days of our democracy who were getting this thing of distributing monies and other things at our universities. Things changed when we had to transform that. But now 
they are beginning to come back again. And Alta is one of their instruments. We have an appointment with Alta at some stage, myself as a minister. I want to say that. For the things that they've been saying, which they have no proof of. Now, that didn't happen then that we actually did this. So we are saying to the universities, continue to pay. We did it for two months, and we realized that it's somehow working for now. It doesn't mean it's a permanent solution. And we then say, it's important that whilst at this point, when we are appointing the administrator, to then begin to attend to some of the problems, let the universities continue. It's not shifting the goalposts whatsoever. Anyway, who, are, who is going to pay if we don't give to the universities? Because there is challenge with the service providers. We have a problem with TVET colleges because TVET colleges, most of them, do not have capacity to administer NESFAS allowances. I met with NESFAS management, by the way. People don't say this. Last week. And we agreed that they have to find a way to address the Tibet College's problem. So there's no shifting of, of goalposts until after the election. It's just a coincidence that these things happen at the time when we, it's an election year and we are actually going to elections. Anyway, we don't want elections to be disrupted after all. Even if it were the case we were doing that, we don't want elections to be disrupted by virtue of students who are not being paid. But that's not the primary reason. The primary reason is that we want to address this problem of pay, this, this task uh, of payment. By the way, we would also agree with NESFAS at some stage that consider going to the banks to help you to pay. They've got systems and everything, even for the loan scheme. But all that now we are leaving in the capable hands of the administrator to, to address. I thought that I needed to, 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 to explain this. Yes, people will account. That is why I am saying one of the things that we want the administrator to do is to implement the Vaxman's report to the full. In the Vaxman's report, there are people who are fingered there that they were part of this irregular appointment of these service providers, and they must be charged. NESFAS must bring them before the disciplinary committee. And that's what I want done. That's what the administrator will have to look at that report and actually do that. So we want to ensure that this actually uh, happens. The report that you are talking about by the TGR attorneys, I think I touched on that earlier, uh, that we think that this report should just be about done now. Of course, I hope that I will get a copy, but now officially it has to be submitted to the administrator. Because it was commissioned by the board. It was not commissioned by me. They will inform me if they want to inform me about what the report says, or even maybe give me the report. But now, because it was commissioned by the board, the board now is the administrator. So that report will have to be submitted to the administrator, and the administrator will be able to, uh, to, to handle that matter. Minister must resign. Who is saying that? The DA, the EFF. This new entity called MKP. Thank you very much. I'm not appointed by them. I'm not appointed by them. Why should I resign? For what? For actually growing NESFAS to a 50 billion rand operation today. For the things that I have done with Tivet colleges, extending NESFAS to that, and growing the post-school education and training sector in this country. They are playing politics, of course, when they say I must resign. So I'm not going to resign. I'm not appointed by them. I'm appointed by DA. Maybe the day I will have to be appointed by the DA, I'll go. Because I wouldn't serve a government led by the DA for that matter. They support genocide in Israel. 
90 professors have, have been killed, by the way, in Gaza. Yes, they say I must intervene at Nesfas, but they allow Netanyahu to butcher children and kill 90 professors. In fact, all the universities in Gaza are closed, as I'm talking to you now. So I'm not going to resign because, because there's no reason why I should resign. Uh, because the DA and some of these other parties who didn't do anything when they had an opportunity to do something, then they tell me that I must go. I think I've answered everything. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you so much, Minister, for those responses. Um, let's check. Um, uh, because we want to, in terms of our time, we want to close. But we also don't want you to complain, to say that you were denied an opportunity to ask questions. We have a time schedule, but I will just check, especially a question that may have not been asked before. Uh, you know, And we also can't deny people to ask a question, uh, you know, on your birthday, Minister. Uh, you know. <laughs> no, that's fine. It does not look like we have got any questions. I've looked. <laughs> DJ uh, is ambushing me politely. Um, it looks like we have no questions, colleagues. I've checked. Um, and uh, colleagues know if there are further issues that arise, we have a communications department which will deal with those other issues as they arise. And... Um, Whatever further interviews, maybe we'll also deal with those uh, afterwards, right, to just elaborate on the message that we've got here. Um, and I'm given an indication, you know, um, so I'm a bit left-leaning. Yeah, I'm a bit left-leaning, Minister, you know. So, so, so issues that have to do with, uh, you know, cake and the French Revolution, you know the story. I don't want to go there. So I'm a bit left-leaning, but we'll make an exception in this case, right? In that the minister has uh, generously offered uh, members of the media in particular, you know, to, to come and have a piece of the minister's birthday cake. Uh, I see the cake is there, right? So uh, before you leave, members of the media, please have a piece of cake. And uh, the other colleagues will also direct us uh, if we still have other refreshments still that we can offer, right? And uh, the offer is, is completely unconditional. You know, yeah. <laughs> so please just, just check with us because we may still have. So on that note, uh, Minister, um, DG, Special Advisor, Babum Valo, COO, and especially to you, members of the media, thank you so much for your participation and presence. That closes... Officially, like cake, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're now going to the cake cutting ceremony, right? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this gesture. Okay. So you, you may come, colleagues. There are uh, serving plates for you. So there are serving plates for you. Yes. Yes. But we won't do it here. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. I will send you the location. Okay. Okay.